Canadian wireless companies make a lot of money off you with some of the priciest phone plans and the longest contract terms in the world. Today, Canada's wireless regulator, the CRTC, says it's heard your concerns and is making some big changes. Here's the wireless landscape right now. Across the country, there are close to 27 million wireless subscriptions. More than 20 million of those phones are on a contract. And those contracts keep growing at an average of a million new subscribers annually. That's one of the targets for the CRTC. Havard Gould now with the details. Havard. Peter, a lot of those contracts are those unpopular three-year deals. They're among the things that are about to change. But will everybody see their bill shrink? That's still a tough call. Travelers often come back to Canada worrying about the bills to follow. Those surprise charges that can supersize a bill, sometimes without even a single call being made. If you turn on your phone for one second and you just check something without putting it in airplane mode, you'll get charged an arm and a leg. We come in hope today that you can heal the retail wireless market. Those charges were a top complaint at the hearings held to develop the new code of conduct, where people also complained bitterly about three-year contracts, common in Canada, not in many other countries. In a surprise move, the new wireless code of conduct will give consumers the right to walk away from three-year contracts after two years without penalty. It will also be a lot easier to unlock phones to make switches possible. I think we're kind of getting more in line with some of the other countries' um, you know, rules and regulations. And about those fees that follow Canadians home, they will be capped. When the code comes into effect in December, data roaming fees will be limited to $100 a month. Oh, are you? Extra data charges, which can be incurred anywhere, will be limited to $50 a month. It's expected consumers will be notified when they hit the new limits and given a chance to pay more for more service. I think that these rules will hopefully encourage the cell phone companies to treat people with just a little bit more respect um, and, and to not price gouge them when they go traveling and that sort of thing and to, to stop bill shock. Anyone who wants to ensure that they do Many of the measures are precisely what the wireless industry didn't want. So today came a warning. And when governments come in and regulate and governments come in and add new rules, we can't assume that these things happen free of charge there are some costs to compliance. On the other hand, making it easier for customers to opt out of plans and take their phones to another company may lead to more competition. Hopefully the market will open and then we'll be paying good American prices. There's one other important change. Starting in December, wireless phone contracts will have to be easier to understand with clear language. So even if Canadians don't like what they have to pay, they still shouldn't be shocked. Peter? Thanks, Havard. Havard Gould in Toronto tonight. Well, so when it comes to cost, what are Canadians paying? According to the latest statistics, the average revenue per wireless customer in Canada is $60 a month, higher than the U.S., the U.K., and Japan. Canada is also one of the few countries where charges keep going up. And finally, Canadian companies are in the top three for year-over-year -year profits from wireless customers.